I am going to be presenting our keynote speaker uh, right now. Alan Nalaye is a passionate journalist who is the founder and host of Intervation TV, the first English television for Somalis worldwide. As a young child, her family came uh, into Canada from Somalia, growing up amongst two cultures. Uh, Nalaya learned early on the impact media has on shaping our lives and perception. Integration TV is a platform to inspire and change a Somali narrative. Her early career started in radio marketing, and her television credits include television's most successful shows, American Idol, and So You Think You Can Dance. She also worked on Deaf Comedy Jam with Dave Chappelle. In her volunteer time, she is an advocate for Somali refugees, motivational speaker, and strongly believes in ending violence against women. Please let us welcome Haven Malay. Somalia, 
He was now working in a parking lot to support my 12 siblings and I. My mother, oh, may Allah bless her always, um, she was walking us to school in minus 40 weather every day. And she had 12 children, and seven of us were under the age of 10. So as you can imagine, seeing my parents sacrifice so much, having to adapt to a new country, to, to see them leave a comfortable life in Somalia and come to a new country, inspired me to always do the best I can to fulfill their dream to have a good education. So I did all the right things in life. What does that mean? Okay, so I graduated from university, got a good job, got married, had kids, two boys. The plan was going great. Until my day, I started thinking about what life really means. And I'm sure many of you may come to that one day where you start thinking about what does your life mean in this lifetime? Somehow, education took on a new meaning for me. Like many Somali professionals, I was busy working and never took time to come back to my community. That changed. In 2011, I traveled to the world's largest refugee camp called the Dow. And you know what I saw? The beautiful Somali people that my parents talked about were suffering. They were dying. They were hungry. And then I started thinking to myself, oh my goodness, is that what education got me? To be living in a country and not thinking about the very people that I come from, the very society, the very courageous ancestors that brought me to this world. So education no longer was about me, myself, and I. Education was about impacting the lives of others and inspiring others, like yourself tonight, to do the same. My passion is to inspire you tonight so that you can change yourself first. That's hard to believe, right? We always think, oh, I want to help the world. Okay, let's start with us first. Who are we? Who are you tonight? I wanted you to play this clip from my show. Um, this clip actually, to me, summarizes the very reason why I do integration television. And I want you to watch it and ingest and digest what this young man is saying because this is the exact same root cause of the problem facing our young people outside of Somalia. And I'll tell you after what I saw in Somalia when I went a couple weeks ago. Let's play the clip, please. All right. I think it's like a lot of people do some soul searching, right? Like you get to a point in life where you start wondering, okay, like, you know, my parents are Somali. Do I speak Somali? Do you know, do I speak Somali? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of questions that you start asking yourself. And it's, um, for me in particular, a lot of those questions, they actually come from non-Somali people, right? And come from their curiosity, like, where are you from? Oh, how come you wear a hijab like that? Yeah. Or, you know, they ask questions out of curiosity. And for me, that was enlightening. Like, you know, just take a couple steps back, you know, take a good look in the mirror and be like, yo, you know what, who am I? You know, yeah. and where am I from? And how come I, at times, feel like I have to, you know, part with my part ways of my culture just to get ahead because that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like that's not who I am. That's not what I have to do. I don't have to sacrifice. You know, what I mean, my culture to advance myself necessarily. They can go hand in hand. I could be Somali and I could be Canadian at the same time. Who am I? We are Somali. We are Canadian. But who are we? Do we speak our language? Do we know our religion? So. You, when you watch a young man like Khalif, who's a poet, talk about asking himself these questions and where the lack of confidence in our community, in our young people comes from, then you will understand why all those negative statistics that we heard today, why all these things that we started to, as long as I can remember, my parents have never, as a Somali person, taught me to think I was less than anybody else. 
So why are we now starting to believe all these statistics of being less than other people, living in ghettos, all these things that are contributing to changing our minds of who we were and who our ancestors were? So I went back to Somalia two weeks ago, and it's funny. I, I thought that the kids that lived in North America or everywhere else in the world would have more confidence than the young people back home. But guess what, guys? No way. There is something beautiful about knowing who you are that can never be taken from you. Every single young person that I met in Sabrina, every single person that I met in Somalia who was a youth had a smile on their face. They literally taught me that what is missing for us as young people in this part of the world is we don't know who we are. If we only took the time to start to realize, because we've adapted so well to different parts of the world, no matter who we are as Somalis, if we start to look back and say, maybe the young people back home may have problems like hunger, they might be suffering, lack of opportunity, but guess what? They're happy. They know they're Somali, they speak their language, they know their religion, and no one can take that from them. But somehow, we've lost a lot of that, haven't we? So how do we teach our children to bring back who they are to themselves and revive the spirit of being Somali? How do we do that? Does anybody have an answer? We can sit here all night and talk about the negatives of what's happening, but how do we change the narrative to say, how do we bring that back? So as a mother of two boys under the age of four, um, my passion, first of all, to inspire this change brought me to media. So as a mother of two boys under the age of four, I went back to school. Hard to believe, right? To study broadcast journalism. Talk about the biggest challenge of my life. It was then that I learned the secret to life that's missing in many of our young people. Confidence. Every morning in class, we had to produce a newscast. And then the class would sit around and critique you and how you did. <laughs> Can you imagine people, 45 people sitting around telling you your eyes were not looking the right way, you didn't say pronounce that word correctly. And then one of the girls in my classmates, um, first of all, I was the oldest in my class. I wasn't the youngest, okay? I was probably the, I would say, like, the most overweight, because I just had a baby at that time. <laughs> so I didn't fit the model of what a broadcaster would be, right? But I remember there was one girl in my class, and there was something that she said to me that changed me that day. She said, Hoden, Holland, <laughs> you are good at this, but you know what? You lack confidence. And I was like, wow. Can you imagine? She, she told me something that was eye-opening for me. If I can show confidence in my abilities in life, I can do anything. And if we can teach our children how to be confident in who they are, where they're going, and what they want to do with life, we've solved half the problems in our community. But guess what? confidence has some hand how many, how, many, how many of you have heard those words? How many of you guys have heard those words that, you know, you're so excited to tell someone something and they say to you, who do you think you are? You think you're going to make it? So my about the height, like, yes, who I said? Do you know how many people told me I couldn't get this television show on air? Then I stopped telling people what my goals were because I remember every single Somali person, including family members, they're dream killers. <laughs> Do not tell your dreams to Somali people. <laughs> dream killers, okay? <laughs> and I speak from experience, because I sat there six months by myself trying to make a dream happen when everybody around me, including community leaders, who do you think you are? You're gonna be on city TV. What? So I tell you, 
Don't tell your dreams to small you people. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't do that. I think that's changed a little bit, you know? So in studying television, I saw the importance of believing what you do and what you say. And in our community, like I said, our youth need more confidence. So for me, lack of confidence comes from not having the right cheerleaders in your corner, not knowing who you are in your culture, religion, and fear to be ourselves. You know, some people will look at me and be like, you know, you will be about the high school degree, and I say, excuse me? Like, when did all these identity labels come on us as women, as identity labels come on us as women? As, as, as young girls that grew up in this country who are just as Canadian as we are Somali, you know? So to me, it's like we need to really look at ourselves as Somalis and say, am I contributing a positive word to somebody when they tell me something? Am I building this person up or am I building them down? So I just, tonight, I want you to remember something before I let you guys go, because I know that it's been a long evening and you guys have been so kind, alhamdulillah, to sit through everything and listen to everyone. Um, I'm not anybody special, but alhamdulillah, I feel like there's times in our lives when we have callings to do the right things for our community as, as human beings, and I resent every single person that tells young people, don't get involved with Somali people, don't help your community. Well, who are they? So I have no idea. I'm just like Somali. Twenty-four years, I have no idea. And no, BS. Okay. If we don't do it, who's going to? If I'm not here tonight, sacrificing my time and energy to give you guys the opportunity to see that there's value in our young people in our community, who's going to do it? Who? Do you think? Canadians are going to do it for us? No. I don't think so. So, in this note, I just want to leave you say that change in our community, whether it's education, whether it's whatever, it starts with us. How do we become better individuals? How do we grow who we are to contribute back to our people, whether it's locally or internationally? So tonight, I just want to encourage you all to think outside of yourselves. But first start with yourself and say, am I that person? Am I doing the right things in my own life before I think about other people? Because if you can't help yourself, you can't help other people. If we are not strong in our education in this country, if we're not strong who we are as individuals, how can we help Somalia? How? So I urge you, be the best you can be if you want to contribute to the greater good of our community and humanity. Because there's people waiting for us, and there's 10 million of them back home who are educated, excited, and look to us as role models. And if we're letting them down, and we're getting into all kinds of drama and troubles, and we're trying to go back to Somalia to help, come on. You can't help yourself. You're going to help me. That's what they say. So I just want to thank you, and alhamdulillah, for your time. And uh, I appreciate y'all for your support on integration television and our new season's coming up soon. And uh, like I said, I think Ottawa is my favorite city. I'm moving here. <laughs>